wanted to make this film to demystify mental illness. I, myself, have rapid cycling bipolar disorder. This is my story and the story of these children. Even as a young child, I lived in fear. I would hide in the attic so no one could see me. I was terrified. My little hands would get damp, my heart raised, ready to leap out of my chest. My name is David. I'm 12 years old and I'm bipolar. David came at about two days old and he just stayed um, probably well into, maybe by the time he was eight years of age, it was evident that he wasn't going to be placed for adoption. And I made a verbal commitment to see them through the foster care system which would be till the age of 19. I decided a few years into that that I would adopt his older sibling. And in order to do that, I felt that I would and should take them both. I have, I have four brothers, well, sisters, and one, and one brother. And I think there'll be, uh, when we go to the new house, there'll be about, I think, three kids. Well, four, because I have myself, of course, including. So, it'd be different. It's in Sussex. And we'll be living on a Ballet Vu Drive. And a lot of stuff like that. So, we'll be, on, we'll be on a big house. There's a lot of different stuff on Ballet Vu Drive. Actually, they have a big bakery nearby, and, uh, and a big place, a mall. I'm also a, an adoptive parent as well as a foster parent. I don't know how many children I've had. I've had three birth children, and there would be hundreds of foster children. I don't really know. Currently parenting six children, four of whom have special needs. I have, like, three girls. One big one, one small one, and a round one. And it's really different. I have to take them every day. And I take them with my juice. But usually at Sheila's, I take them with uh, peanut butter. Because I love peanut butter. It's my favorite treat. <laughs> À Noël, j'étais toujours déprimée. Je détestais Noël. J'étais vraiment négatif. Ça, c'est comme quand on comme un peu là, le seasonal affective euh, disorder. Ça arrivait tout le temps que mes manies étaient springtime. Puis là, mes dépressions étaient plus vers l'hiver ou quelque chose comme ça. Là. J'ai commencé à tomber malade quand j'avais 14 ans. C'est vrai, c'est des dépressions au début parce qu'ils me donnaient des... des antidépresseurs. Moi, je me souviens, j'étudiais pour, pour des tests d'école, dans mes livres d'école, puis je braillais. Je m'appelle Blanche Véronique Cormier. Mon diagnostic s'appelle schizoaffectif qui veut dire euh, bipolar et schizophrène. Présentement, je vis dans une maison de transition avec euh, 14 autres personnes. C'est une maison qui aide les personnes qui sortent de l'hôpital à transitionner de l'hôpital à éventuellement vivre seul, de nouveau dans la communauté. Les premiers signes pour moi, je pense, ont été bien sûr à l'adolescence. Peut-être en huitième année, là, je pouvais voir déjà des tendances dépressives. Puis à un moment donné, j'en avais même parlé à mon médecin de famille. Tu sais, j'ai dit, euh, tu sais, chez nous, sur le côté de mon mari, il y a de la maladie mentale. 
Est-ce qu'il y aurait une, une possibilité que Véronique aurait un problème euh, de déséquilibre mental? Puis lui m'avait rassuré, non, elle est trop intelligente, faites aux emports, elle, elle a un petit peu de drama, euh, c'est juste une crise. J'avais besoin de plus. Je suis avec la maladie mentale, puis je le savais pas. Je suis avec la bipolarité vraiment bad, puis je le savais pas. T'sais, je suis allée à l'école, puis des fois, je suis dans les salles de bain, puis je braillais, puis là, des fois, je prenais des crises. I was afraid of our neighbor, terrified of his voice. I could not imagine myself in his presence. I was petrified with fear. I was already dealing with these terrible emotions at four years old. I've always known that David had issues. I've known probably well before the age of two, so we kind of grew with them and threw them from one set of issues into another. But I was well aware that he had some significant issues at a very early age. Easy to love, but very difficult to parent. I got a little bit mad. I knocked over a table. It was bad. That was really bad. And I accidentally knocked out a window. Even worse. He becomes very aggressive and very violent, both to the um, things around him. Desks are thrown, chairs are thrown, people are hurt. Um, very abusive. Lots of screaming and spitting and hitting and biting. So he has a lot of um, people holding him, trying to keep him safe and them safe too. Hi, this is my room, my toy box, my dresser, my bed, and my closet, and my shelf with the closet on. And I have a, I have the uh, truck wallpaper and and uh, blue wall, blue paint and some uh, and and the attic door in, is in here. It's different. I have a lot of stuff, even toys, tons of it, in there. It's fun. This is my room, of course. It's different. My room is actually uh, the one of the most famous room in the house, according to all the kids. Everything became irrational, inexplicable fears, but surreal. Adult laughter turned into nightmares. Their voices seemed so loud and disconnected. I imagined that they would completely crush me. Curled up under a bed, I was strangled by fear. Vers 4h30, j'entendais du train en bas, puis j'ai descendu en bas. Pal était assis dans la cuisine, hors la cupboard, dans la position fétale, euh, pas fétale, euh, fetal position, oui, fœtus. Puis elle, 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 elle se berçait, puis elle pleurait, puis j'ai dit, Véronique, qu'est-ce qu'il y a? Puis elle dit, maman, je suis folle. Je suis folle. Elle dit, amène-moi à l'hôpital. Elle dit, je suis folle. Donc so, j'ai monté en haut, j'ai réveillé John, j'ai dit, on a un enfant malade. Les autres enfants à l'école, il ne fallait pas qu'ils prennent les médicaments, puis moi, il fallait. Donc so, je me sentais assez seule, puis. Ouais, c'était vraiment difficile. Des fois, j'écrivais des poèmes. Des fois, j'essayais d'écrire, je sais pas, des chansons. Voilà. Des fois, j'écrivais, 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 j'écrivais. Ça 
faisait du bien, c'était... J'aimais ça. C'était comme un « healthy outlet ». My head hurts again, my eyes are dry. My emotions an open wound with lemon drops. Everything, everyone, a reminder of how it used to be for me. Childhood, so heavy. Accept, move on, still hurts. Tears of wonder, tears of hurt. Days of confrontations, further understanding. Other people's issues remind me of my own. Slap to the face, shot in the eyes. Pictures of my youth, home videos of my memories. Bring it all up to my throat. I try to swallow in this present moment. Anger down, chin up, swallow. Shot of breath, clammy hands, heart racing, ready to explode, anxiety attack. Hello, je m'appelle Brandon, j'ai 12 ans. Je vis à Scudo, puis je souffre du trouble du comportement. Je me rappelle longtemps passé, là. Um, je sais pas quel âge qu'il y avait. Il allait pas à l'école cette année. Um, je dirais à peu près trois ans. Il y avait une gardienne, là. Je, je travaillais en haut, puis j'avais une gardienne, gardienne. Puis elle a eu vraiment la misère avec, comme il prenait vra vraiment beaucoup de tantrums. Puis moi, je pensais comme... Il était juste gâté ou je l'ai gâté trop ou quelque chose. Que... Puis là, elle a amené au point qu'elle m'a appelé à l'ouvrage pour dire qu'elle ne pouvait plus prendre garde à Brandon. Um, je sais pas quoi ce qu'il faisait. Il, il allait haut, oh, puis ce qu'il disait en an, comme c'était pas juste un petit tantrum qui vraiment il prenait des crises à terre, I guess. Puis moi, je pensais ce temps-là tellement comme ADD, parce que tu tendais beaucoup d'enfants qui avaient ADD ou AD, ADHD. Puis je savais pas quoi c'était beaucoup de crises dans la loi. Qu'est-ce qui arrivait? Comme on disait des time-out, puis on te met de ta chambre, rappelles-tu? Oui, je ferais aussi la table, mais mon four, puis je pitche mes livres à terre, mes cahiers. Tu frappais avec ton poing ou? Oui. Ou ta tête? Oui. Euh, je l'ai tué. Puis ça me tombe de vie. Puis. Euh, puis là, avec moi. Un couteau de chair. Puis tout ça. Ça commençait à l'école. Puis quand il était dans le maternelle, il y avait eu beaucoup de misère. Maman, ce temps-là, tu blâmes ton mère aussi. Puis je trouvais l'école aussi. Là. Il blâme beaucoup les parents. Tu n'as pas fait assez à la maison. En fait, tu peux les laisser à la maison. Oui, il y a une fois qu'il s'est assis à la table, puis je faisais ses dessins. Puis il a juste il, il, il salé les jeux, juste salé les jeux. <rire> il prend contre la tête, contre, contre la table. Puis il faut qu'il dise d'arrêter, puis il n'arrêtait pas. Quand je faisais un problème à l'école, j'ai tiré des affaires, puis... Qui était tout le temps les pupilles, puis j'avais tout le temps comme la rage. Quand, quand j'étais en très femme et d'avoir, j'ai mis très fâché, puis je faisais tout dans ma tête. Quand je disais, je haïs ma vie, ça me tente pas de faire ceci, puis je me me shooter, je me me tuer, puis tout ça. Il pouvait pas lire, il pouvait pas écrire, puis il pouvait pas s'asseoir, il pouvait pas rien faire. Puis... On l'a trouvé qu'il était dyslexique aussi. Il était malade, comme il était agressif. Puis, ça, so, tu penses à cause qu'il y a eu la misère à ce temps à l'école. Puis, nous autres, à la maison, on a assez comme tout ce qu'on pouvait. Mais c'était vraiment la misère comme pour s'asseoir puis dire faut que tu lises, puis faut que tu fasses ceci. Puis, lui, il est amené plus malin, plus malin. I can't concentrate in school. My head is spinning. I jump at the slightest noise. I want to sink into my desk. I want to disappear. Hi.
Hi, my name is Erin Sean Quigley. We, I am I'm a girl from London, Ontario, Canada, and I have bipolar disorder. From the time she was a year old, we knew she was different. We just didn't know what it was that was different about her. We had started looking, uh, when she started daycare, we knew that she had temper tantrums that lasted longer than most children. Um, our friends' children would sort of have a temper tantrum that might last for 15 or 20 minutes at the most. And Erin could have a temper tantrums that lasted for two hours at a time. She'd be inconsolable, screaming and yelling and crying. And that's really when we noticed that something was definitely different. So we started looking for help then, but it, she was so young that it was really difficult to find anybody who could help us or tell us what was going on. The thing is that even though I have bipolar disorder, I'm still just a normal girl. I mean, I have friends. I, oh, sorry. I thought there was something wrong with the fish. Anyway, I'm a teenage girl. I'm 13 years old. I'm going through puberty. My body's changing a lot, and my my levels are changing a lot, and I'm probably gonna gonna have, uh, and probably sometime soon, I'm gonna go through a bad uh, day streak. So that's the thing. It's really unpredictable. It's like the slots or something. Something. It's like, <laughs> yeah. You know, when Erin was five years old, she said, I'm the worst little girl in the world. So my heart broke. And at the same time, when she was four, she said, um, you know, you're, my mommy walks with grace and beauty in the sun. You know, and so that's been the two extremes of our, uh, of, of our lives with Erin, you know. Uh, a moment of sublime joy and pleasure and heartbreaking pain. I've tried so hard to do my best. I've tried so hard to please you. I've tried so hard to work it out. But I guess you don't know what you want. Well, I just want to escape from all of this. Just want to be on my own. Just want away from all my fears Until I want to fade them I'm not ready just yet But I'll tell you when I am And that's why I can This song doesn't have a specific tune to it. It changes all of the time. So like like a weird ghost story I read and where a picture changed a little bit every day. But that uh, sto that song I wrote, my dad was, I had had a, had a bad day and he had a mood swing and my dad had was yelling at me. Whenever I agreed with him, him he'd call me a fake and whenever, whenever I defied him, him, he'd yell at me even more or about arguing. And so I didn't really know oh, oh, what to do. Hence the, is, is the part that ends the first verse. I guess you don't know what you want. But I'm not saying my dad's a bad guy. He's a great guy. He's funny and exciting. And he get, and is, and is cut, and, and is really fun to be with when he's in a good mood. But he's not. Stay away. But with juvenile bipolar, um, they, their moods change rapidly in the course of a day. Adult bipolar, mania for a number of years, depression for a number of years. Um, so, you know, she would be really angry, then really happy, then really sad, all in the course of one day. She couldn't control her own emotions, right? That's what it is, rapid, rapid cycling. Um, and that's hard, that was really hard. She, did, she got that diagnosis when she was seven. My disorder starts with anxiety. Then come sudden shifts of mood, depression, tears. I've cried all my life. Hot tears run down my burning cheeks. J'ai vu une lettre à côté de son lit. Puis j'ai pris la lettre puis je m'ai mis à la lire de quoi que je faisais jamais. Mais je m'ai mis à la lire. Puis dans la lettre, c'était un de ses amis qui, qui écrivait une lettre. Puis qui lui partageait qu'il fallait qu'elle fasse attention parce que 
C'était dangereux qu'est-ce qu'elle faisait. Puis quand je continue à lire, c'est qu'elle avait commencé à se mutiler, à se couper. Je me coupais pas au creux, je me coupais juste assez pour, pour filer, um, juste pour relâcher les émotions. Um, mais... Ouais. Non, j'étais juste tannée, j'étais juste tannée de filer folle dans ma tête. Tous les fois qu'il y avait une crise de, ses, de son bipolaire, c'était tout le temps moi, à moi qui qu m'aurait téléphoné ou à m'a rapproché, puis j'aurais dit, j'aurais demandé tout simplement, es-tu prêt là? Puis on s'aurait compris. Elle, elle aurait dit oui, je suis prêt. Puis là, je l'emmenais à l'hôpital. Ben des fois, il fallait que je la tienne physiquement de sauver, mais je savais qu'elle ne m'en voulait pas parce qu'elle savait que c'est ça le rôle qu'elle voulait que je joue. The internal suffering that drives the body and the mind. Inconsolable suffering. All the tears in my body flow like an endless spring. He has um, probably bipolar. He's probably got some severe attachment issues. He has a genetic predisposition to all kinds of neurological disorders from both mother and father. But he also has fetal alcohol, uh, maybe some other things, but so far that seems to be the major. That's a lot. He's been on Respiradol since he was four years old and a whole series of other medications very early on. He was on Prozac before he was four. Uh, Nozanin, Clonidine, and a variety of medications trying to figure out. It didn't really do anything. We're managing. I bite severely bad. Makes a lot of people ill too. It's bad. Some DAs have to go home. So I get kicked out of school. But actually I got kicked out of school for another reason as well. And that's the reason why it's very dangerous to do that, so that's what they told us. And actually one of the TAs had to go to the hospital. Her name was Mrs. O'Gorman. So I heard her correctly. Her arm turned purple. I bite pretty bad. I do it to a lot of people too, I don't know why. So when I get temper active, it's pretty bad. Yep. He needs his medication. Yeah, I think it's given him a, yes, we do have behaviors, and but it gives him a better understanding of how to calm himself down. He has the ability calm down, whereas before he didn't have that window of opportunity. The first few years at the school he was in, they had a, a particular room they called the quiet room. I have always been there, but I've never known that room existed. And I went to pick him up one day. I could hear him, but I couldn't see him. And it turned out the quiet room was actually a soundproof closet with no windows, uh, a full metal door with a window at the very top of that, and someone, they shut the door and sit outside and wait for him to stop. It wasn't a really good experience. Inside that room was, at the top was a clear set of Christmas lights. On the bottom was uh, finger marks where he was trying to dig his way out. That was my first experience with, um, I don't know what it was. It was very demeaning anyway. I know they did what they needed to do, but it just, that was how they handled it at that time. It's not like that today. Um, I promptly called his worker, took her. It wouldn't have been allowed in any other situation. I didn't see why it should be allowed in public school system. I had my kids with me, so they knew. Um, he was screaming and spitting, and sometimes, if you were lucky, a TA would be sitting there waiting for him to stop, but it was pretty bad. 
Even the principal put me in there one time. It was bad. I got kicked out of school one time too. Well, I guess that's new at West the new school, so they don't have a quiet room there like they used to. They have something a little bit different. They have a resource room. Which is a little bit better than a quiet room. <laughs> Hours spent hidden away in the tiny corner. My small body trembling. Streams rise from my lungs, piercing shrieks. I've lost a mint. My parents are fussing, trying to calm me down. I bite my nails, blood on my fingertips. I bang my head against the wall non-stop. The blows resonate inside my body. I Oh, I want to kill someone to kill someone. I want to kill someone. Je ne sais pas comment ce qu'il explique, comme pour l'expliquer, comme il, il mettait les points, comme il faisait des trous dans ses walls, comme... Je ne sais pas comment expliquer. As he got older, some new peel. Mais si tu veux pas faire des dessins, vole ta chambre. Tu voles sa chambre, il commence à crier. Là, il criait, juste prends un couteau, puis tue-moi. Ah, juste prends un couteau, puis tue-moi, ok? Tue-moi! Et tu m'as la cause. Oh, juste tu moi juste tu moi Je veux pas vivre. Non, moi, je sors de la jambe. Tu donnais cinq minutes, il était calme. Je m'arrangeais pas, ni rien. Je l'ai jamais frappé, mais je l'ai frappé sur les fesses. Tout j'ai fait cet enfant-là. Puis à jamais, je sais pas. Je savais pas ce qui se passait, je le savais pas. Comment ce qu'il disait, il voulait se tuer. Ça, so, j'ai juste. Moi, je pensais que c'était une ou deux fois, puis il a dit comme. Une couple de fois, là. Puis j'ai pris un message. Quand je suis parlé à la principale, lui, il disait, il l'a tendu comme trois fois, quatre fois par semaine. Je pensais, oh, ça, là, j'ai dit ça à la psychologue, là. C'est ce temps-là qu'elle a parlé à Brandon. Puis il savait même comment qu'il ferait. J'ai pensé, you know, c'est plus sérieux qu'on croyait. Quand je faisais des différents rêves, comme des extraterrestres qui, qui l'aideraient comme au côté de chez nous, puis ça me faisait assez peur. Des fois, dans ma tête, je voyais comme du monde en arrière de chez nous qui marchait avec un gun et tout ça, même. My father, a gentle, tender, intelligent man, would be completely transformed. It become verbally and physically violent. He would always take it out on my mother. His personality changed. He would go from calm to instant fury. My father was bipolar. Je voulais pas accepter que mon enfant avait un problème de santé mentale. Puis je voulais pas qu'elle prenne des médicaments. So moi je me disais tout le temps ah oh, Véronique, euh, ok tu, tu veux en avoir besoin pour un petit bout de temps puis. So moi vraiment là, quand je regarde là. Ça, ça n'a pas aidé dans, dans son jeu. Parce que Stuart, elle va me dire des fois, « Maman, parle pas de médicaments. » Là, je prends des médicaments le reste de ma vie, là. Puis commence pas à dire qu'il y a des affaires naturelles, puis c'est ça, puis ça, puis ça. Là, j'ai compris. Mais pour longtemps, moi, j'essayais de trouver d'autres alternatives. Parce que, je, en quelque part, je crois bien que je voulais encore me convaincre que mon enfant ne souffrait pas de santé mentale. C'est difficile comme quand on a une maladie mentale, parce que la question, c'est est-ce que je devrais dire ou non? Parce qu'une fois que tu le dis, il est très, complètement différent. 
Les gens ne voulaient pas nous entendre parler qu'on avait un enfant qui souffrait de... C'est comme si c'était tabou, ça. Ils avaient peur de ça. Oh, je m'en rappelle une journée, là. J'ai marché au petit magasin, puis il y a un monsieur qui était dehors. Puis euh, elle, elle avait travaillé au petit magasin, là. Sur tout le monde alentour la connaissait. Puis euh, en tout cas, quand, quand je m'en venais, il m'a crié, puis il dit, comment est-ce que Véronique? Puis j'ai dit, Véronique, ben, j'ai dit, elle va mieux. J'ai dit, pourquoi tu t'informes d'elle? Ben il dit, j'ai entendu dire qu'elle était malade, puis qu'elle était folle, là. Ben moi, là, ça a venu me chercher. Là. Ça, c'est des paroles du vieux temps, là. T'es folle, là, tu sais. Puis je m'en ai venue ici, puis j'ai dit, ah, tiens, mon doute, qu'il y a du monde ignorant. Encore aujourd'hui, peux-tu me dire que ça existe encore, ça? Ben ça, c'est parce que les gens ne comprennent pas. Il y a un gros manque d'éducation. From the age of 15 onwards, my one and only challenge was to hide this discomfort, this anxiety, this trembling. Nothing else mattered. You hide your illness with lies and absences. These are my meds I take in the morning. I take the same thing at night, just in different doses. This is omega-3. It's fish oil that just helps my brain work better in general. And this is lithium. It's a kind of salt and it's an antipsychotic. It takes vitamin B out of my system, so I have to also take a dose of vitamin B. Sorry if me taking it is boring. And this is Tegretol. It just slows my brain down, right? And as you can see, I take it with milk because milk is thick enough that it cushions its way down. Before we started our journey, I was pretty anti-medication for children. Um, <laughs> I think most people probably are. Um, I think the thought of having your child on medication, especially if they start when they're very young and have to continue to take medication for a long time is very scary. So we were very cautious. We did a lot of uh, work ourselves, Sean and I, researching medication, uh, looking on the internet, seeing the kinds of side effects, making sure that we were well aware. Oftentimes we would come to the doctor um, having read information and suggest changes to medication based on what we'd read. We would always follow up any suggestions with our own research as well. And we talked to other parents too, um, and we share knowledge amongst ourselves, parents that uh, are all um, in this boat together. I'm a very bright little girl. At the head of my class, I'm shy, but I'm the best. At 15, everything changes. I can't perform anymore. Everything terrifies me. I'm paralyzed by anxiety. Actually, Dave's doing really well in school. He's had a real positive school experience. Yes, he's had major issues at school, but he's had wonderful, wonderful school supports, and he's always had teachers and TAs that not only had a willingness to work with him, but would ask for him year after year. Oh, I learned a lot at school this year. I learned a lot about electricity and how, um, and how the circuit, we learned about circuits as well, like a series circuit and, um, know a lot about it. We're moving. Part of why we're moving is to give them a chance. Things are pretty routine here right now, so he needs to have growth. He needs to move through life at a different level, in a different way. And it just wasn't planned, it just happened this way. That It's been a concern for a while that they didn't have um, a male mentor, or especially with David, he doesn't ride a bike, doesn't have neighborhood friends, few school friends, but he doesn't really have a life. And this is a chance. It just came up, and um, I decided I'd go for it. 
So I bought a house, try a different mode of living in the country. C'est l'affaire que tu es pure que ce n'est pas pensé. Je crois que j'étais plus pure que 10 ans comme c'est moi, comme c'est moi comme para. J'étais plus pure que 10 ans, c'est la manière que je l'ai élevé. Je l'ai trop gâté, je ne l'ai pas fait attention assez. C'est dur à faire des décisions pour la mettre à l'hôpital. Puis je ne voudrais pas que ce soit à cause de moi qui est mère. Comme c'était dur pour la laisser là. Je ne sais pas, je ne sais pas si c'était Dieu. Dieu pour lui ou Dieu pour moi, je ne sais pas. Et j'ai juré tout le temps après, puis je suis allée tout le temps après. Quand ils disent en fait pas ça, comme je s'en donnais la rage, l'alcool. J'ai vu à qu'elle amène à l'hôpital pour une semaine parce que. Elle n'avait pas pu passer à travers la chose. Ça nous a aidé beaucoup. Parce que soit qu'elle est tuée ou. Je sais pas. L'école de Bouli en plus, ça serait une autre misère qu'elle avait. Après qu'il m'a demandé, comme si tu es dans ta famille, pas... quand tu sais quoi ce qui est bipolaire, tu sais pas quoi. Ce... Comme tu... tu penses après, comme ta famille, oui, c'est dans la famille. Il n'y a personne qui t'a diagnosé bipolaire, mais il y a beaucoup de suicides dans ma famille. Puis... <coughs> J'ai une cousine qui... Son garçon était 16 ans. Il s'est hangé. Je ne voudrais pas s'arriver à moi. Je ne voulais pas que ce soit nos vies. Tu ne sais pas. Tu ne sais jamais. La vie est dure. Puis ce qu'ils trouvent, c'est dur à 10 ans. <coughs> ben, je crois pas que c'est la vie qui trouve Dieu. Je crois que c'est. Qu'est-ce qui était en dedans de lui? Il y avait quoi en dedans de lui? Puis je sais pas. Ben, yeah. Il y a eu des médications à ce Puis ça l'a fait du bien. Puis on l'enjoy assez. C'est bizarre à croire que j'ai venu ici une couple d'années passées. J'avais pris trop plein de bouteilles de, de médicaments, puis je m'ai couché ici, puis j'avais attendu pour monter avec mes ancêtres. Je suis restée ici pour au moins une ou deux heures. J'ai attendu de juste m'endormir. Ça s'est pas passé. J'étais juste tannée. Tannée de struggler avec... Euh, avec ma santé mentale, de toutes les sortes de différents médicaments, puis toutes les, toutes les fois, il fallait que je visite l'hôpital, puis recommencer à zéro, puis tout. C'était vraiment difficile. Les derniers 10 ans, 11 ans de ma vie maintenant, ça j'ai 25. Ça a vraiment été difficile. J'avais juste plus d'énergie. Je pensais juste que j'allais jamais être nouveau à être heureuse ou sourire. Puis j'étais juste vraiment fatiguée de tout ça. Imprisoned in a straight jacket, incapable of moving or breathing. The suffering is palpable. Immense loneliness. The walls closing on me. I'm suffocating. We were going into the store and Aaron lost it, went into a complete meltdown. 
I remember Sean and I just kind of looked at each other and he said, we have to leave now. And I said, yeah. So we said to Aaron, you can either walk out of here under your own power or that he's going to have to take you out. And uh, she just wasn't going to leave. She made it clear that she was not leaving until she got that toy. So I had to pick, literally pick her up, throw her over my shoulder, hold her because she's fighting like a demon and Heather's, you know, and all these parents and all these people are watching us and Heather's got her head down and she's trying to get out the door. I'm trying to get her out the door. She was having a, a mood swing. She'd been told she couldn't have something. And it was really, it was, it was awful. It's mortifying as a parent to go through that. You see other people and they're looking at you and all I could do was just keep heading towards the door. Get her into the car, you know, forcibly shove her into the car, clip the, the, the belts on, um, the seat belt on, and we're driving, and she, we're driving down the road. Heather's um, shaking, talking into the phone, the cell phone, um, calling our psychiatrist. And I'm driving, and Aaron's kicking me in the head. I was kicking at the seat and punching, punching the people in the front seat, which is very hard, might I add. And so I was pretty determined, and there you go. And so at that point, Aaron got hospitalized for a little while. Directly after I got out of a rage, I feel hollow. It's just my word for it. Hollow. Hollow. Because as I just, my eyes are just all baggy and I can't and, and remember a thing and I just feel like flopping down. I'd call that a hollow feeling. Your heredity marks you forever. The suffering continues. Anxiety overwhelms me to the point of vertigo. This paralyzing anxiety is tenacious. Dread persists like troubled waters. Detested, I hate you, I hate sleeping. Yeah, you know, you're the family that I abandoned. Yeah. Puis, les autres ont pas, je sais pas. It's a real struggle sometimes for parents to stay together under these kind of circumstances. It's very stressful. Um, Sean and I are think are lucky that we had sort of the same values and the same um, goals in terms of parenting. Or if you're with someone who doesn't believe that your child has a mental illness, I think that's even more uh, difficult. Ready. I feel miserable, like I don't belong in the world. That's the point where I often beat myself up. Not actually beat physically myself up, like punch kick myself. I'll, I'll, or cut myself like some people do. Ooh, ooh, I start insulting myself and saying what an idiot I am. Sometimes I, I, I even swear at myself. I call myself an F and B sometimes. And if it's really extreme. One of the things about Aaron having bipolar disorder is that I, I don't hey. look at other children the same way anymore. Let's sing Interstellar Flight. <laughs> Rainbow trout to our bed. Pretty bird. Pretty bird. When the medication was first started, we changed a lot to different medications. It changed a lot. We're getting used to it now because we're on the exact same medication now, but that might stop like, you know, probably in a couple of months or something. That bird is nuts. Aren't you a little fella? Little Did you make any new friends there? 
Yes, I made an Alex. What are you kidding? More friends? Okay, maybe I met a couple more, like Devin. No, that's not Devin. Yeah, that is um. I think I did met. Did you make a... any girlfriends? Yes, I did. I already made a girlfriend, except it wasn't at school. Is that something else? Although my girlfriend was quite nice. But I already dumped one, because I didn't want to keep two. <laughs> so what I one had... did you dump? The ugly one or the nice one? Mm, there wasn't any ugly ones. They were both quite nice. Oh. I have a quite nice one that... Um, I have a boyfriend. I know one. I actually have a girlfriend that... Um, at the house, the house I went to this weekend. What, Wendy's? Yeah, I went Was there. it Victoria? Yes. I shouldn't be telling this on film, but yeah. Oh, why? Yeah. Another hospitalization. I was convinced that my real parents were not my real parents. I pensais comme I demanded que comme for real, que I wanted a paternity test. I was convinced that my real blood parents were the royalty. And that when I was young, to protect me, they had put me in a family of rednecks. To protect me. Like, so much conspiracy. Là. Sudden inappropriate mood shifts with no warning, eruptions. My rages are always triggered by injustice. Someone makes a nasty comment, my mood changes. J'étais à la principale. Puis là, j'étais dans son office, je se moque de lui. Puis il disait, he goes, you're quite wrong. J'ai dit, shit. Il a dit, um, tu sais, juste l'enfant là va end up. Puis moi, j'ai commencé à broyer, of course. Puis j'ai dit, shit, si quelque chose qui arrive pas, he's going to be in jail. He's going to be abusive to his wife. Je dis, si, je voyais tout ça. Il a dit, pas même ça. He goes, l'enfant là va être dans une mental institution. He was aggressive, he was abusive. I could see that because he could come to me because love and hate can turn so fast. You're not afraid, you don't want to be because I don't want to say that he has a mental problem. But he has no mental problem. He doesn't want to be like a mental institution because with his pills, he is very normal. I had a lot of friends and it wouldn't work. I was in the hospital. And... Well... Là, parce que j'essaie deux piles. Puis, à ce temps, je n'ai comme la bonne pile. C'est ça, je, je, me, je me arrache, puis, puis, je ne peux pas être là. Puis là, tu trouves une différence, là, tu, là, tu pourrais dire qu'ils semblent tous heureux, puis, plus confiance en lui-même, puis, juste ça. Je dis à Brandon, oui, il faut qu'il prenne des pills, comme c'est pas, c'est pas une grosse affaire. Il est pas dans une wheelchair, il peut vivre pareil, il peut faire tout ce qu'il a besoin de faire, il a juste besoin de faire une affaire, c'est prendre sa pile deux fois par jour, c'est tout. Je vois, c'est tout, il peut vraiment vivre une vie normale. Et all I do is steal food. <laughs> Most of the time I steal food. Because I like, I'm, I get into anything that looks because good. Because if he doesn't eat that much supper, he usually gets into the... If it, the door's not locked overnight, he'll go and get food. Oh, not this room. They only have an alarm. They have an alarm here in case he gets out and the door's not... Like like one time at the old house, we, we're, all, we're all sleeping. Not right now, Alex. And we heard the alarm go off. And, but he didn't go in the bathroom, he went in the kitchen, and he snuck food. It was quite fun, too. <laughs> we have explored lots of different options for helping Erin to um, manage her moods. Um, we took a meditation class through uh, CPRI, which is where Erin's treated. And after that, Erin and I did meditation privately as well with a meditation teacher. And yeah, then, she uh, taught me Reiki. 
and then at the same time we learned Reiki and uh, for a long time we did Reiki um, twice a day um, every day uh, because it helped Erin to stay focused but also helped her maintain her moods to an extent she can do it on herself I can give her Reiki it's that's been really great too and the other thing that we added recently is we started going to see a homeopath so that we can look at other options with um, natural uh, with Reiki natural methods cardio, the issue that. is that there are many natural products that interact with medications so we have to be very careful the other side of it is that it's about the family and it's about the community we live in so there isn't just one thing that solves it. It's never just one thing. It is a, it's a whole combination of things. It, it's a continuum um, of care, and that's really, really important. Um, cause not, because, you know, if, if, if it was just medication and that was it, well, I don't think we'd be half as successful as we are. Fits of rage, bitter taste in my mouth, the need to say I'm sorry, to beg forgiveness, shame. The medicament is called clozapine. Fallait qu'ils m'introduisent ce médicament là. La façon qu'ils m'ont introduit m'a fait peur. <laughs> une des infirmières, mon docteur, m'a rentré dans une petite salle, m'ont si, puis m'ont dit que c'était le meilleur médicament qui pourrait, tu sais, tout régler. Puis m'ont dit mais Il y a un gros effet secondaire. Tu pourrais mourir. <rire> J'étais comme, c'est une blague, là? Qu'est-ce que la joke? Puis, juste, tu sais, là, pour la première fois dans ma vie aussi, là, je voulais plus mourir, je voulais vivre. So. Ça, ça m'a vraiment alarmé. Euh, là, j'y pense. Puis, tu sais, je... Tout de suite, j'étais comme non, je veux pas ça. Puis, mais éventuellement, tu sais, j'en ai parlé à mes, à mes parents, mes parents, ma famille aussi avait peur. Mais là, on a tout fait la recherche. Mais ça fonctionne vraiment, vraiment bien. My thoughts race and jump from one subject to another. I become voluble. Nothing can stop me. Everything is jumbled in my head. Racing thoughts. I had to have shelter pillows. I didn't like them. Well, imagine that. You're a parent with a child, and you have to give up custody of your child because that's the only way they'll get the care they need. It's, it's sad. And, 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 how, and what's crazy when it comes to parents. So if my child had diabetes and she was sick, right, and we go to the hospital, immediately, doctor, they get the medicine, they get everything. That, that child gets all kinds of care, nutrition, everything. Child has epilepsy, child gets all kinds of care right away. Child has a mental illness, parents take a class. Think about that. Rather than trying to get the medication and the treatment and to figure out what the diagnosis is, parents take a class. And then, six to eight months down the road, then we'll get to talking about what the diagnosis is and the medication is. And then two years after that, you'll get into a program where that might be able to help you as well. So if that was diabetes, that child would be dead already. So that tells me that that's prejudicial. It's prejudice. And the only way we can change that is by talking out loud about it, by doing what we're doing now, talking out loud about it, and not trying to keep it behind the closed door. People judge you. You feel judged because you're different, ongoing prejudice. You're lazy, crazy, mental. Comme toi, disons, tu étais beaucoup affecté par beaucoup d'événements dans ta vie. Ça, so, c'était clair que tu étais un, un petit enfant ou une petite enfant intelligent et sensible. Mais 
tu sais, comme, looking back, le monde peut peut-être dire, ah, oh, mais quand elle a fait cette crise-là, ou quand elle a fait cette crise-là, ben c'était des signes que peut-être qu'il y avait un issue de santé mentale qui pourrait survenir. Mais en grandissant, en tout cas, de mon côté, moi, je pensais jamais à ça. Je, je me demande si tu aurais été diagnostiqué plus jeune. Oui, s'il vous plaît, mais oh. la 350. Si j'aurais. Ce qu'ils m'avaient mis sur les médicaments que j'ai plus tard, ce temps-là. Je pense que c'est une vie normale, c'est ça. Puis aussi, des fois, comme tu dit, c'est que ce qui est arrivé est arrivé. Puis tu, tu disais l'autre jour, toi, quand tu m'as dit l'autre jour que tu aimais aller au collège, puis de travailler dans, dans le système, peut-être que là où tu peux atteindre des, gens, des jeunes. Puis nous autres, en tant que famille, même quand on ne savait rien de ça, la santé mentale, parce qu'on a vécu ça, est on est des advocates. Tu sais, vivez pas, on, on parle ouvertement de ça à n'importe qui qui est, là, qui est ouvert à ça. Puis ça, ça aide à bouger. C'est juste comme. Tu as quand même souffert beaucoup. Yeah. Yeah. C'est pas nécessaire. C'était pas nécessaire. Non. Ça fait plus qu'un an que je suis sobre. Tu sais, là, je fais pas de drogue, je fais pas d'alcool. Euh, ma santé mentale, sur les médicaments que j'ai utilisés tout de suite, je m'ai jamais senti aussi bien que je me sentais dessus. Comparé aux autres médicaments que j'étais dessus, euh, je me sens comme moi-même. Day of sadness. This insidious, silent depression smothers me like a spider web. Hide this distress. Hide all these signs. Hide in silence. To all those doctors and uh, psychiatrists and teachers and educational assistants and people who work in agencies, um, what's really important is that the parent is the expert. The parent knows their child better than you will in your 15 minutes in front of sitting with that child trying to figure out who they are or what they are. This fall, something amazing happened. Something very, pretty much unheard of. It was elect they've decided to do student council this year. And so I ran for the position of fundraiser. It was just my little step forward. Now, now I was running against a pair of girls who were both going for the job together. Heather, who were popular. Popular grade eight girls. Now, what do you think happened? I got 96% of the votes. 96. I, and everyone, and everyone was asking my mom after, every teacher was saying that they, that she wrote it. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> We've always celebrated the fact that she's different. We've never um, made that uh, an issue. We've always said that it's a great thing that she's different. And when we found out she had bipolar disorder, it was just like we had a label to put on that difference. It wasn't a label that we abhorred or wanted to, uh, you know, I think a lot of people get caught up in the whole idea of labels and what they mean. And we embraced the label and said, great, let's use that label to help us get the help that we need. Let's embrace the label and let's uh, let that be something very positive that we can move forward with. We go fishing down here and he really wants to go, but he's so uncoordinated, it's kind of like now you see him, now you don't. We're walking through this, well, it's pretty harsh walking and all of a sudden you hear Dave talking and you look back and he fell in a hole. So you have to go back to kind of, you know, see if he's all right and he's grumbling, hauls himself out and away you go again. Fishing wasn't working. So you asked me to look for worms. I asked you to hold the worms. Oh, yeah. And they ended happened? up in the water. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and there was water all through the worms. <laughs> so that was a bad one. That was bad, too. <laughs> well, that's kind of funny, though. And you didn't catch any fish? Nope. Nope. But you got a soaker, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> And Alex got her fishing rod stuck in the water. That's right, and, and swam out to get it, right? Yeah, and she was screaming half to death. 
That That's cool. Yeah, I know. It was kind of cold that day. And while she was doing that, you fell in the other hole backwards. Yeah. <laughs> Mom, it was actually really warm. Did we catch fish that day? Nope. Yeah. Did we catch fish? Oh, yes, yes. We caught we got, lots we, of fish. We caught <laughs> trout. At the end of it, you you had fish. You caught your fishing limit, but you got a lot more than that. You you come out feeling so, not that he fell in the hole or not that he was soaking wet, but we were all looking pretty grimy. But they bring you a lot of joy. Shim pravo se visim. Se mi preferi. Kikam ali tis fe li tis gut. Le sang avec le blanc. Je sais pas comment j'ai fait ça. <rire> Écoutez, enfant, notre cœur, notre petit enfant, tu peux pas trouver un humain aussi pur et vrai que celui qu'on a tout caché au fond de nous. Puis c'est ça, moi, quand j'étais sur le lithium fort, mon petit enfant était, était comme dans une prison. <rire> J'aime celui-là aussi. Une chaise d'école, puis les barres de prison. Je trouve que c'est fascinant au jour d'aujourd'hui, tu sais. Je regarde comment est-ce que les lignes sont droites, puis uniformes, puis tu sais, je regarde dans mes journaux aussi, puis je suis juste fascinée que c'est moi qui ai fait ça. C'est au jour d'aujourd'hui, tu sais, j'écris plus dans mes journaux ou je fais plus grand art non plus. C'est juste comme, c'est moi qui ai fait ça? Comment, comment j'ai fait ça? Je sais pas. En tout cas, j'aime ce gars-là. <rire> j'ai pas créé des œuvres depuis longtemps. J'ai créé, euh, je pense, trois peintures. Mais ça, c'était quand j'étais à l'hôpital. Depuis ce temps-là, j'ai pas... J'ai pas vraiment essayé non plus. <rire> Mais, tu sais, mais j'arrêterai pas de nouveau mes médicaments. <rire> non. Pas après 11 ans de, <rire> de back and forth, puis back and forth. Another little one. What's not this heavy? <laughs> so it probably weighs a pound. I have a lot of friends at school that don't usually like me. Do I need to let it down? One friend that wasn't that nice, neither. Forget his name, but he wasn't that nice. I'm not gonna say his name though. Well, he called me a knee game, and I usually don't like that. When he uses it, has has his advantage. I don't like it. It's not that good. And I don't take it as a compliment either. It annoys me so much when people do that, especially when they use it as their advantage. I'm sure you guys wouldn't do that. I'm sure you guys wouldn't do that. That happens most of the time, by the way. There's other schools that people were kind of different. There's a lot of kids at the old schools and ones now that weren't that good. It changed a lot to me because I don't know, I usually like most kids at these schools. A lot of kids didn't, didn't like me. The fact that the United States has better mental health care than Canada does, where we have universal health care. The fact that Canada is the only country in the G8 that doesn't have a mental health policy, that makes, me, that makes me really ashamed. That makes me really ashamed that we're that far behind. I think it's cheaper overall to step in now while they're growing up than it is to keep them in an institution. I, that's, that's my greatest fear. I do not want my boys in jail. I do not, but it's easier for them to send them to jail than it is to find them, sir, and that is what's happening. And for somebody to think it's not, let me tell you, I hear every 
darn day. And I hear it across the board, the whole province. There's mama. There's mama. You see mama? Avant, j'avais comme deux ou trois amis parce que je réagissais comme malin, puis je rigais tout le temps. Puis à ce temps, ça va être comme plus bas. J'ai plus d'amis. Hein? J'aimerais ça comme un mécanicien, comme arranger des corps, puis peinturer, puis tout ça. Je vais essayer de vivre une maison, je vais essayer d'avoir des enfants. Je pense que je vais avoir une bonne vie parce que je vais essayer de me faire comme de l'argent. C'est pas une même garçon. Pas en tout. Non, j'en plains pas de changer ces mecs qui commencent tout. Ben, malgré que faut qu'ils prennent ça tout sans vie, c'est ça que c'est, c'est ça que c'est. T'as pas le choix. Quand vous avez des enfants avec des besoins uniques, que ce soit mental ou pas, I think you actually gain more because you work harder and you have to find a different way in. Why would that child be running around pounding on that house or why would that be child be screaming? And there's no reason for it. But the ironic thing, two minutes later, everything's wonderful because it's not a big issue for the child. So you learn to be humble, you learn to be creative, you learn to be a lot more loving, a lot more forgiving. and. Uh, but it, it does take its toll. I guess it must be a Japanese pumpkin. <laughs> She talks more about um, what she wants to do in terms of a career. Uh, she wants to be a video game critic. And, um, you know, she'd like to be, I think, a writer too. She definitely has a skill for writing. And she apparently right now is saying that she'd like to adopt lots of children. Hey, just falloir que je me, je me fasse une vie, là. Que je sorte de ma, ma petite comfort bubble, là. Step out in the real world. J'ai peur, but what do you want to be when you grow up? Maybe a police officer. What? Probably a detective or a police officer. Okay. That could be interesting. Yeah. Would you arrest me? No, no, I no, I don't arrest people that are evil. <laughs> Think you'll ever get married and have kids and probably. Probably? Oh yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, but I heard a girlfriend anyways. You're gonna find one? Oh yeah. What would you want that girlfriend to be like? If you had a special friend that happened to be a girl? Probably a blondie. Oh my gosh. Je sens bien, je me crois comme les autres. J'aime juste ma vie, c'est ça. Je sais pas. It matters to me a lot for people to know who I am. Online, I will say that I have a mental illness. And I'll say, no, I'm not a guy in a straight jacket. I get, I get, my moods, moods are, I have trouble controlling my moods. Moods. And if anyone misunderstands, they get taken off my friend list. My delivery is heightened. My thoughts come clear and fast. I'm angry. The diagnosis arrives way too late, at age 40. 
rapid cycling bipolar disorder. Immense sadness, then relief. Your body and soul gradually adapt to the medication. The trembling stops, the fear disappears, light emerges, 